In the previous videos, we talked about what a hidden Markov model is, how you estimate its parameters given data, and now the question is, how do you figure out how to actually get part of speech labels given an input sentence? This problem is called inference, and we'll use a technique called Viterbi decoding to do just that. This technique is named after Andrew Viterbi, whose name is also attached to the University of Southern California's Viterbi School of Engineering where he was a professor. But he wasn't just a professor. Hidden Markov models are used for error correction on cell phone calls, and thus Andrew Viterbi was also co-founder of Qualcomm. Part of the reason that this college is called the Viterbi School of Engineering is that he gave $52 million to them from his uh, lucrative application of things like hidden Markov models. What the Viterbi algorithm allows you to do is to take a sequence of words x1 to XL and to find out the sequence of part of speech tags that give you the highest probability given the observation of the underlying words. It's impossible to compute all of the K to the L possible sequences. So what we're going to do instead is to use dynamic programming to compute the best probability for any subsequence going from zero to time T that ends in a particular state K. If you haven't seen dynamic programming before, it's a very common tool that's used in computer science to turn a big problem into a bunch of smaller problems that build on each other. And you get to save some computation because the solutions are reused. So typically what you do in a dynamic programming setup is that you have some base case. You can find the solution very easily to small pieces of your problem. For part of speech tagging, the base case is what is the best probability that we can get given that we have a sequence that ends in part of speech k at time 1. So we've observed one word, the first word. What is the highest probability sequence of part of speech tags that could get us to that point with the part of speech tag k? The answer is simple. We don't have any choice in the matter for this one. We're in state k whether we like it or not, so we just compute the probability of being there. To compute the probability of being in state k at time 1, we multiply the initial probability of that state by the probability of observing the first word in that state. Now that we have the base case, we can build on that base case using recursion to find the highest probability for any subsequence ending in a particular part of speech tag. This is where the Markov property of hidden Markov models comes into play. If we know the highest probability that you can get in state k at time t, it doesn't matter how you got there. Any future highest probability must be built out of a subsequence that was shorter than this one. And you can just go back one step and search over all of the possibilities. To turn that into math, if we want to find out what is the best probability that we can get from some sequence of part of speech tags ending up in hidden state k at time n, we look over all of the other part of speech tags j that could have gotten us there, multiply the probability of the solution that we had at the previous time, n minus 1 by the transition probability of going from j to k, and then multiply that by the probability of observing the word that we saw at position n, given that we're now in state k. The complexity of this algorithm is k squared l. It's k squared because we have a table of size k times l, and to fill each of those little cells, we need to look at k previous states. But computing the maximum isn't enough. You also need to remember the best state that you came from. This is necessary so that you can follow the pointers back to rebuild the best part of speech tags. Thus, this is often referred to as breadcrumbs, a reference to Hensel and Gretel uh, from a fairy tale retrace their steps in the forest. So now let's look at an example of figuring out the optimal part of speech sequence for the sentence, come and get it, given the hidden Markov model that we estimated before. And of course, we need to start with the base case. So we need to figure out what is the best sequence that could get us to each of our part of speech tags at time one. So again, this is easy. We multiply the initial probability pi times the emission probability for that word for each of our part of speech tags. This gives us the probabilities that you see in the rightmost column here, but you've noticed uh, that I've taken the log of those probabilities. So why did I take the log of the probabilities? 
There are a couple of reasons. Uh, one, we're going to be comparing a lot of probabilities here and it's easier to tell when a number is larger or not when you've taken the log. Otherwise, for very small probabilities, you're just counting zeros. But that's what base 10 logarithm does. So instead of counting the zeros ourselves, how about we just ask log to do it for us? Reason number two, in terms of the computer's representation of a number, it also makes it a little bit more convenient because underflow is less of an issue for small probabilities. And finally, reason number three, addition is cheaper than multiplication. That's not a very good reason given modern architectures, but I'll mention it anyway. But anyway, instead of multiplying the probabilities, we can just add them together because log of a times b is equal to the log of a plus the log of b. If you look at our base case, you see that the most likely part of speech tag for observing the sequence come is that come is a verb. Thus, the highest number in the rightmost column is negative 3.56 for the verb part of speech. This is the highest probability sequence of part of speech tags that explained the observation come. And so this was very simple. This is our base case. We're going to extend it out further. So let's do that. Let's extend it out one more step going from time one to time two. So what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the highest probability part of speech sequence that can get us to time two in each of our parts of speech. We'll end up doing this for every part of speech eventually at time two, but for the sake of concreteness, let's just do it for conjunction at first. To do that for conjunction, we'll need to look at every previous part of speech that the sequence could have had at time one. To work out the math, we'll fill up the middle column here with the log of the product of the base case for each part of speech, the row, times the transition probability of going to the hidden conjunction at time step two. So let's consider, what if we were in the verb state at time one and conjunction at time two? Thanks to the property of the log, we can break that down into two parts, the base case and then transitioning from verb to conjunction. That transition after taking the log is negative 1.65. We add those things together to get negative 5.21. Once we've done that, we see that we don't even need to bother with the pronoun, the preposition, or the noun, because that's always going to be less than negative 7.99. However, we do need to compute it for the other parts of speech, but we still don't get anything higher than negative 5.21. Thus, the best way of getting to time two in the conjunction part of speech is coming from the verb. But we're still not done for filling out this cell. We need to multiply the probability that we got there by the probability of observing given that we're in the conjunction state. Since we're working in log space, that's actually in addition, and that gives us negative 5.21. And that gives us negative 5.21 plus negative 0.81, a final score for the conjunction part of speech tag at time two. Moreover, we need to record the breadcrumb for that position. When we're in the conjunction part of speech at time two, our best previous state was the verb. We continue to fill out the table at the next time step. At time three, the best part of speech tag to explain the sequence is the verb with the breadcrumb pointing back to the previous conjunction. And at the final, final time step, the best previous breadcrumb is the verb. When we want to figure out the best part of speech sequence for the entire sentence, we look at the very last time step, find the element in that column with the highest probability, then follow the breadcrumbs back. In this case, the highest probability subsequence ends in a pronoun, then we follow the breadcrumbs back in reverse order. This gives us verb, conjunction, verb, and then we put it all together and get the best part of speech sequence for the sentence, come and get it, is verb, conjunction, verb, pronoun. So that's it. Now you know how to take a bunch of part of speech annotated data, estimate a hidden Markov model from that, and then use that data to find parts of speech for new text. But the ideas are more fundamental than that. So even though this is the end of our discussion of hidden Markov models, don't forget about them. Hidden Markov models are central to more applications such as speech recognition or tracking objects. The dynamic programming techniques 
are also something that we'll see again when it comes time to create a parse tree. And the general structure of a hidden Markov model with a latent state attached to each word evokes the structure of many of the other fancy models that we'll see later, RNNs, LSTMs, and transformers. Understanding the intuitions of hidden Markov models and where they fell short will help you understand modern natural language processing. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.